Hello everyone, I'm Alicia and welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. So some of you may remember a while back I bought a whole bunch of these gemstone donuts and I told you that I had an idea that I wanted to try with them and so I have had several projects come, come before this but um, I've been playing with my donuts and I have come up with some really cool designs and I feel like I could have experimented more with these donuts but it's been over a week since I've made a video and I wanted to get this out so I'm kind of stopping here with my donut experimenting. So this one here was the first one that I completed and this is what it looked like before I did it. This is a donut that I've had for a long time. I actually forgot about it. Um, this is a donut that I bought from Michaels a few years back. It's a Blue Moon name brand and the line is Natural Elegance, I think that's what it was. And there's three of these donuts in a pack. It was pretty cheap. You might be able to find these if you go online and really search, but that's what they're called. So anyways, I love the, um, it's like laser, laser etching on this. So I wanted to bead this, but I didn't want to cover the entire donut. So I only did half of it, and I used some different size beads, and I'll go over the sizes with you. And I, this turned out beautiful. I'm so happy with it. And then, um... I had bought all of these donuts here and I realized I would probably be covering up a lot of the pretty patterns on the crazy lace agates so I didn't end up doing these because I didn't want to hide the gorgeous patterns so I just went with the stones that didn't have a, lot, a whole lot of uh, patterns going on with them so this one here there is not much underneath this it's pretty blank it's just right here that the pretty pattern is going on so I just beat it and I covered that up you can see through it of course but you can't see uh, really well and um I have the pretty up prettiness up here so I'm going to be putting a chain on these two loops right here and that will be my necklace I'm really happy with that so I wanted to also show you that you can take and bead the entire donut and this is what it looks like so this was a 40 millimeter halite donut this is a 45 millimeter pyrite donut and I bought both of these from Lima Beads and all the other donuts you saw I got from Lima Beads it's one of my favorite stores to shop at online and um this has turned out beautiful and I think I might be adding a chain to this or a cord it would probably be from like here I wouldn't do it from the center because it would be too flippy and I all the weight would be in one spot so I'd probably hang it like this maybe even have a jump ring go underneath the four millimeter I don't know but um it turned out to be amazing and what I really loved about this is you don't need an exact size bead. Yes, you do want like eightos to do the outer edging, but you could play around with different shapes of four millimeter beads. You could do 10 OC beads, 11 OC beads. You could do them together. On this one, I use both 10 and 11. And um, the bugle beads, you can use such a huge variety of sizes. I've used a five millimeter up to, I think this is an eight millimeter in this one. And in this one, you can see that I use two different sizes of bugle beads. Basically, when you go to do this, you just want to make up a cute little pattern that reaches from the center to the outside of your donut and you want to have bugle beads on the inside of your donut because if you have seed beads on the inside of the donut they're going to sink into the hole. So while I was playing with this I had another idea that I wanted to try so I merged off and I actually ended up making this right here. Um, I like to go to thrift stores and collect belts and purses and things. I always find really cool, even shoes, things like that. I get lampshades all the time I used to go do this. I haven't done it forever. But um, these metal rings here are actually from a belt. They were connected together. So I took them apart and I thought, you know, I have so many of these big donuts that I that are wide what if I took something that was thin like these rings. So I took the ring and I just set it down. I'm like, well that ring there looks cool in it. And I'm like, well, I could put beads in between here, this empty space. And I'm like, well, there's this empty hole. I would like to put something in there. So then I just sat there, that right there inside of it. So this is how it comes about. And I, I could see that, um, you know, I could fit beads in this gap. So I just took some 6OC beads. I put them into the gap. And I saw how it would work. And it just instantly uh, came to me. And I ended up making this here. It turned out pretty cool. I haven't finished this off yet. I actually just abandoned it because I knew you guys wouldn't be able to make the same exact thing. But I wanted to show you how cool this piece is. It kind of looks like 
it came off of a shoe to me. I don't know. I think it would be cool if I could find a pair of sandals and make a pair of these and put them on it. Because they just look so cool. I love them. And um, I would actually like to make just the middle piece right there and have this be the center and have two smaller pieces on the side and some uh, antique brass ch chain going around. I don't know. I just wanted to show you guys this because I thought it was pretty cool looking and um, it's sort of similar to these but uh, that's another idea I had and uh, something I was playing with when I was making these donuts. So one more thing I want to tell you about. These donuts here are 25 millimeter recycled glass donuts. That donut was 40 millimeter. This one I actually didn't measure, but that one there was a 45. And um, these here are 25 millimeter. And I tried beating these, and I had a hard time working with these. I don't know if it be was because they were so small, but I actually abandoned them, and I just stayed with the 40 millimeter donut and up in size. Um, I don't know, the beads just weren't sitting correctly on this, so um, I just wanted to let you guys know you probably don't even want to bother with the 25 millimeter donut size. You'll want to stay with um, the larger size and up. So uh, let's dig in. There is so much information I wanted to tell you. Sorry that was so long. So I'm going to give you the list of materials, and before I do, I do want to make clear that I'm not going to tell you an exact amount of each kind of beads that I'm using because um, this pendant is really neat on how it works. You don't have to use the same exact beads that I'm using. You do want to stay, you know, similar with your uh, seed beads here, but you can change up uh, this bead, you can change up the size of this bead, your donut, you can have a bigger donut, a smaller donut, so I'm not going to tell you the same exact size beads, and also you can have half of your donut decorated, you can decorate your entire donut, so I'm not going to tell you bead counts for this project. So, for the list of materials, you will need 9 feet of 8 pound fire line. Now, this one here took 7 feet of fire line, and the one I'm making in the video took six foot of fire line. If you want to take and make a donut that has the entire thing decorated, you will need nine feet. But to be safe, you're just probably going to want to just cut nine feet so you don't have any problems and have to take it apart because you don't have enough thread. And this is a weird project. You can't really tie th a new piece of thread into this after you know gone a ways you have to really start it over so other than the nine feet of eight pound fire line you will also need a size 10 beading needle and I am using tulip that is my favorite band I'm also using a large donut this donut is a 40 millimeter donut and I bought this online and when you buy gemstones online you don't know exactly what you're getting um, you just know that you're buying a certain kind so uh, this is a halite stone, and there's not a whole lot going on on this side of the pendant, so I figured that I will just bead all of this here, like I did, did this one, and just cover that plainness up, and then I'll have this really pretty pattern on the top. You're also going to need 4 millimeter beads. I'm using check fire polish beads but you could probably also use uh, 60 seed beads. When I first started designing this pendant, I used 60 seed beads, Toho's, and it worked just fine. This one here, I used two different kinds of uh, beads here for the edge. I used Czech Fire Polish 4mm, and I also used uh, Rondelles. You can probably also use bicones for this, so just know that you need 4mm beads. You will also need 80 seed beads, and I found this to be important for the edge here because of how wide their hole is. These are Toho, the ones I use in this one are Miyuki. Um, it just sits perfectly on the edge with the 80 seed beads. You're also going to need 110 or 10 seed beads. This one I use 110 Miyuki, and this one I am using 10 Czech seed beads. And you're also going to need bugle beads, and you can use different sizes of bugles. I found that the sm the smallest you would want to use is a 5 millimeter, and larger, up to like an 8, 9 millimeter. It depends on how wide your donut is, because basically what we're trying to do is make a cute little pattern that will fit from the edge to the center, and then we repeat that all the way around the donut. So you're also going to need something to hang your donut from. You can do a chain or a cord. 
it's up to you. You can do a beaded strand. This one here, I was just going to do a cord, and then I'm like, well, the pendant is so extravagant, I have to do something else. I'm like, maybe I should do a beaded strand. Maybe I should do a chain. Maybe I should do all three. And so I did all three, and this is what it looks like. I am in love with this. I haven't done color combination like this and I really love how it looks it's so pretty and this uh, bale here I recycled this from another pendant I took it off that pendant I got the other pendant from like a thrift store and it just turned out beautifully so this is a list of materials and remember I will have other information down there in the description bar below the video other than the materials I will tell you things down there that I haven't mentioned in the video because I forgot to mention them in the video and also it just makes the video so long so Let's get started. So I'm going to start by picking up an 8 seed bead and I am going to have to use this 8 seed bead which is part of my design also as an anchor bead. And what I will do, I will try to remember, um, before I tie off my thread I have to unravel the thread that's passed to her multiple times so it's not seen. So what I like to do is I pick up an 8 seed bead K and I've tried to knot this in other ways, but I really haven't found any other way to anchor um, this in place. So, I'm just going to take this end here. Instead of using my needle to go back through this bead, I'm going to use the tail end because a lot of the times when I use a stop bead, um, I pierce the thread. I think everybody does it. And then you can't get the stop bead off. It's stuck because your th needle is going through the thread. So what I like to do is just pass it through with the end of the tail. It's so easy to do, you know, it's a large hole in the seed bead. So I'm going to leave an eight inch tail. I'm just gonna grab the end here and slide this down. This gives me enough to go back and um, secure my work. So I have an eight inch tail now and I'm just going to pass my short little tail through this two more times okay so it's it's th through three times and because I'm not doing the needle I'm not piercing my thread and later on I can easily pick those loops and undo that um, stop bead there okay pull that tight so there we go we have a stop bead now we're not gonna have any beads sliding off the end so I'm gonna continue I'm going to pick up my uh, seed bead I'm using tenos remember I said that and I measured these bugle beads, and they are 7 millimeter bugle beads that I'm using. But like I said, you can use so many different sizes. So I'm picking up a bugle, a seed bead, a bugle, and I accidentally picked up an extra one there. I discovered that this little pattern right here is the same width as my donut. So that is going to be my pattern right there. Now this one here, my donut was so wide so I was able to do a large bugle, 11-0, an 8-0, 11-0, and then these bugles here, I think those are five millimeters, and then I repeated that pattern again. So um, the wider your donut, the more beads you can put on the top of it, and I think the more uh, prettier it looks if you can have a really wide donut. So um, that's pretty cool. So I have my beads. Okay, this is for one side. And also, note, it's very important to have your bugle bead, which is the longest bead, at the center of the donut, right there. Because if I have a seed bead, it's going to fall into this hole, and then it's going to clog up my hole. So, always make sure when you do this, to have your bugle bead right at the edge of the hole. Do not put a seed bead at the edge. Now, down here, it does not matter if there's a seed bead or a bugle bead, okay? So I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to pick up a bugle, a seed, a bugle, and a seed. Just like this, and right here in between, this is going to be the center of my donut. So I'm going to slide this down. Okay, so here is my pattern. I'm going to pass my needle through my donut. And then I'm going to pass my needle through my seed bead. And I have to be very careful not to pierce that thread because I have to back that out because I don't want that to be seen. And I can see there's a nice clear hole there. 
and I'm not piercing the thread, okay? So now I'm just bringing my tail through. Okay, so now I have to pull this tight. So now I have this, okay? So now I'm going to pick up a four millimeter, an 80, a seed bead, and a bugle. Now your pattern might be different from mine. As you can see with this one here, I did not pick up those same beads. I had to pick up an 11, an 8, 11, and that bugle there. Okay, so I'm going to make this Y look now. Looks like the letter Y. Okay, so pull this tight. One side here will be loose. That's the side I just went through. So I'm going to flip and go to this side here. If that makes sense. I'm just going to hold this in place. Taking my needle, I'm going to pass through this seed bead and through the bugle. So you guys can have so many different patterns that you could do on top of the donut. It's up to you. It's, it's also like you are also designing this yourself because I'm showing you how to do this technique, but you get to design the pattern of the seed beads and bugle beads you want to do on the top. Okay, now pull this tight. And t tension is very important in this project. I'm going to now flip this over because I'm on this side and I'm going to pass the needle through this bugle and also that seed bead. Okay, and once you pull this through this will become much tighter. Pull this tight again and I have the pattern here. I want this to be on the top so I'm just going to slide this over here to where the pattern starts and I'm going to bead this bottom here. Okay, my thread, I actually need this to go that way. Out of my way. Okay, and I'm just pulling this tight. Okay, so now I have to pick up this right here and go through that 8 -o. I need a bugle and a seed bead. And again, you might need a different pattern. Oops. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to go through this 8 -o, just like I did on this side. Okay. So through that 8 seed bead. Pull this through. Okay, I like to pull the 4 millimeter up like that and pull this tight, slide it all down. So you could see how important that tension bead is right there. And you can see the thread sticking out, so later on I will undo those threads so they won't be shown. Okay, and I want that there to be even, so I'm just adjusting it before I start the next one. Okay, so it's tight and I'm ready to go. So again, I'm going to pick up my 4 millimeter, my 8 and then my pattern that goes on top of my donut. So here's my pattern. And like I said, you do not have to have the same pattern as I do. Yours can be different. Okay, so here is my pattern. I'm going to slide all of these down. I'm going to take my needle. Ouch. And I'm going to go, I'm trying to remember this. I went through the center, that's it. Okay, there was a certain uh, technique that I did this so that um, the tension stayed tight and it didn't get loose on me. So I just went to, through the center, okay. Right here's my tail. I'm going to come right here and pass through this 80 seed bead. Okay, pull that tight again. You want to make sure there's no beads in the center of your hole. You want to slide them up. So see this right here? I could do this again, okay? And I did. I tried just having the straight lines. And when I did that, this here got clogged up big time. The hole got so clogged up. These beads were all bunched up. It looked terrible. It does not work. You have to do it just like this in order for this to work. Now, if I just had thread going over the donut, it would be fine. But because I want to decorate it with seed beads, I have to do it like this, okay? 
So this is what the back looks like. So again, I'm going to pick up my 4 millimeter, my 80 seed bead, my 10 and my bugle, just like this. Now I have to go through this seed bead. I'm skipping over. Oops. I'm skipping over that seed bead and that bugle, and I'm going through those right there, okay? And also, I'm going to go through the center hole of my donut. Now, before I pull these beads down, I'm going to pull that tail there tight and then pull these down. Lay these over just like that. Come up through the back side, take my needle and pass through this bugle and through the seed bead. And pull that through. Okay, now lay this over. It always wants to fold in the wrong direction, but you have to tell it what to do. Okay, I'm just going to pull this tight, and I like to get my bugles lined up because sometimes they are naughty and they don't want to lay where I need them to be. And also, it helps if you grab this Ada right here with your nail and you go like that you pull this tight okay so right now I'm exiting out of this seed bead I need to pick up my bugle and my seed bead okay and I'll flip it this way so you can see I have to pass through this 8 -0. pull that through so now you can see these uh, silver Eidos, you can see why the Eidos are so good to have on the edge there. Because they have a large hole, but they're not too large, it fits perfectly on the edge and it works great. Okay, so just tidying up my beads there. And again, I like to pull the four millimeters so they stand out. Looks nice, tight, clean work. Okay, I'm going to continue working. And by the way, this slides around so you can't adjust it like I'm working in that direction so I'm going to just slide this around because I want this to be the top of my pendant um, it does get a little bit harder to slide it the more you do so um, I try to get it where I need it to be with the first few rows okay so I'm going to continue now picking up my four millimeter my 8 my 10 my bugle 10 bugle and I'm just repeating my pattern and remember, you have to have an empty space in between those two bugles right there. You don't want a seed bead falling into your hole. Okay, so I'm just finishing my pattern. There's my pattern. Slide them all down. I like to pick them all up at one time on the needle if I can because sometimes I accidentally pick up an extra seed bead or an extra bugle and I have to take it back off so I try to do it all in one shot but if you're doing a very big donut like that wooden one then you have to do it in like two shots so okay so I have my beads on here I'm going to go down through the donut okay I need to slide my beads down so then here are my new beads Take the needle, pass through the 8 pull the thread down. Before I pull this tight, I'm going to pull that tight there, and then pull this tight. Make sure all the beads are sitting where I need them to sit. You don't want any in the hole, remember that. It's very important. Okay, pull that tight. And now I pick up my four millimeter, an eight, my little seed bead, and my bugle. I'm going to pass my needle. I have to complete my Y, so I have to pass my needle through these two beads. 
which is much easier to do when I don't look into the camera and I just look at my hands <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I'm in frame okay so there we go now I have to turn this over and coming through the donut I have to pass through this bugle and through the seed bead and it has gotten loose on me as you could see so I'm going to tighten it up by grabbing this four millimeter pulling that also grabbing the eight seed bead pulling it tight okay it looks better so now I'm on this side and I have to complete my Y so I'm going to pick up the rest of my pattern and then I have to pass through this 80 seed bead and then pull it tight okay just like that so this is pretty simple I'm going to repeat this again I don't know maybe one or two times I'll see how it goes so you guys get the hang of this okay so again I'm going to pick up my pattern the pattern starting all over again my four millimeter my 80 and then the pattern that goes on the top There's my pattern. Slide that down. Go through the center of the donut. Come up through this 80. Pull it tight. Make sure the beads aren't sinking into the center of the donut. Okay. Push these up with your fingernails. That's what I do. And I just have that piece there completed, but I have to do the Y. So in order to do the Y, I have to pick up another 4mm, an 80, and then the pattern that goes on the top. I'm going to go through these two beads. And again, I'm looking in the camera instead of looking at my hands. Through the donut. Okay. I'm going to, this got loose on me again, so I'll have to fix that. Coming to the back side now, I'm coming out of the donut, I have to pass through these two. And to complete my Y, I have to pick up my bugle and my C bead. Okay, through this eight. just like this. Now I am going to show you how to decorate this entire donut all the way around and I'm also going to show you how to do it halfway. This donut I'm going to do halfway. After I show you how to do this one I'm going to go to another donut and show you how to decorate the entire thing. It's going to be so cool. It's really awesome that design. Okay so I just Okay so I went you know where my pattern is this is how much I want to bead and I have just this little bit to add on to complete my Y so I'm going to pass through this 80 here pull my thread through pull this tight make sure that this is laying properly okay and now I have to straighten all of these four millimeter beads out and I'm gonna scooch this together a little I'm going to put an 80 seed bead in between each four millimeter bead it's going to bring all of this together it's going to straight out the four millimeters so they're in a line because right now they're kind of like going up and down and at angles they're just they're misbehaving okay so this is what I have now so after you complete this Y take your needle and pass through the four millimeter bead just the one okay pull it very tight so now we have this now I'm going to pick up an 80 
put it right here. I'm going to pass through this four millimeter. Just like that. Pick up an eight through this four. Pick up an eight. Now, you don't have to have eight OC beads right here in these gaps. Um, it's just how I ended up doing it. You probably could do a 6-0. I haven't tried it. I just stuck with the 8s because they were perfect for me. But um, if you run into a problem where you feel like you need a bigger bead, you could probably go to a 6-0. And if you feel like you need a smaller bead, you could probably step down in size. Okay, so I'm just going to go all the way around. I might fast forward... Last one. Pull it tight. And now I have this. See how straight they look now? All my four millimeters are straight. Doing that really tidied up the piece. So now is the time where I have to pick these threads that I have on this 8 at the beginning, my little short tail. I have to get rid of those now. So I'm just going to take my needle and undo them. It does help if you push this through because then you could see, you know, the last one that was done. And I have one more. Okay, I went through three times. So there we go. All of that's undone. Now you can't see the thread there. So I'm going to take my short tail and just get that out of my way. Right now my working tail is coming out of this 4 millimeter bead. So I'm just going to hold the short tail out of my way. I'm going to take the working tail, go through the 80 seed bead, and through the beads on the top of my donut. Okay. Just pull those through. Just like that. I'm going to continue to pass through the beads here in the top. What I'm doing is I'm reinforcing this because I had to undo that and now it's loose there. And also I have to change my direction. I'm coming out of that 80 seed bead. Okay, so now I'm on this side. And I'm going to go through these. Just like this and I have to go through this 80. So now my tail is coming out of this 80 in this direction instead of going in that direction. So I'm going to pull both of these tails tight. Okay. Now this donut here, I have the top open because I want to see how pretty it is. And so there's a couple different ways I can hang this pendant. This one here, I was lucky enough to have a hole right there that I actually was able to put a pinch bail on. And I wanted this here to be seen, but I also, you know, wanted to bead that. But um, this one here, I could put a cord on here. I could do a leather cord, satin cord, whatever. I could do a lark's head knot right here in the middle. But I'm going to be hiding my gemstone more. So I'm going to put a loop on each side of seed beads. And then I'll just have a chain coming off the loop, just like that, uh, for this pendant. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pick up six seed beads just like this I'm coming out this 8-0 okay I'm gonna go around back to the 8 just like this, making a circle. I got caught on my desk. Okay, and I'm going to pass through all of these again, and I think I might pass through them three times because I will have, you know, my necklace hanging from this part. So, I need to make sure that this is all tight before I get too far, and I'm just going to reinforce 
this loop a few times. And my little tail really is uh, being a pain in my butt. Okay, I'm going to go through the seed bead again and through the 8-0. Again, pull this tight. I'm going to pull my short tail tight. Okay, and I'm just going to reinforce this one more time through all the seed beads in this loop. Now, if you want, if you have a donut that doesn't have a decorative, you know, pattern on it, you could just hang this with a cord. But I also thought that this might turn. The cord not, might not stay in the center. So I do like this idea of making beaded bales on the sides. Okay, so now I'm going through my CBs here. I'm going to go through this 8-0. Again, okay, pull all of this tight. I'm exiting out of this 8 0, but I also need to go through this one seed bead that I just added. Okay, going through there. Now I'm going to flip this over because it's going to be easier for me to work in this direction. So I'm coming out of the 8 0 and this seed bead. I'm going to pick up four of my seed beads. And again, these are 10 0s that I'm working with. And I'm going to make a decorative edge right here. I'm passing through this 8 0, pulling this through. So I'm going to have a pretty decorative edge on the outside which is kind of lacy. When I first did this I did not think to do this and the more and more I worked on designing this um, I added the seed beads and the edge. So right here the seed beads and the edge that is what I'm working on right now. Okay. Now these ones here are pointed. You can see the points on them. This is not going to be pointed at first. We will have to go back through them and I'll show you how to make them look pointed so it's really fancy. So after going through that one, 8 -0, I'm now picking up 5. So I picked up 4 and that was because I was borrowing that bead there. But now I'm just going to do 5 and go through the next 8. I keep getting caught on my desk. Just like this. Now every time I do this, I like to define that point. I like to go just like this. Also it helps uh, to make the you know, it pointy to take and grab the center seed bead, go like that. Okay, because if you don't do this, if you just pick up your five seed beads and go through the 8 0, um, it will be loose. You won't have tight tension. So I like to do this. So now I'm picking up five again and going through the next eight. Okay, and again, I will grab that center bead. And make that look pointed just like that. Um, this one here is kind of hard to do that with. My first one, because I was sharing that one seed bead. But this is what it looks like, okay? So I'm going to do this all the way around till I get to the other side, picking up five and passing through the 8 0, just like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Picking up 5 and through the 8. Okay, I'm going to go all the way around doing this. It's pretty simple. Remember to go back and straighten out that center bead so it's pointed. and pull it tight as you go. So I have made it all the way around. I'm over here. I'm putting my last one in. Okay, I have my five seed beads. I'm going through this 8-0. Now, for the loop, I'm not going to pick up, I think it was six I picked up earlier. I'm going to pick up five because I just put that bead in that I was sharing just now. 
So I'm going to pick up five. And I'm going to pass through this bead and through the 8 -0. Okay, and then I'm going to reinforce this two more times. So I've gone through it three times. Since this is where my pendant is hanging from, I need this to be secure. So I'm going to reinforce it. I'm fixing to lose my needle there. Okay. Pull that tight. So that's two times around. I'm going to do it a third time. So, right now, my needle is actually going in the wrong direction. Okay, it's going in this direction. I need it to come in this direction out of the 8-0. Because I have to go through these um, little pointy things I just made. So, I have to do what I did on this side. I have to go through these beads, go through the hole, come back around, and then I'll be exiting out of the silver 8 and then I can go in that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, which is fine, because I am reinforcing this area where my chain or cord, whatever I'm going to use to hang this, is going to be attached at. So, uh, it's good to do this. Okay. Passing through all these beads here. I'm just going through the ones on the end. Put this one here. The tenno. Okay, and pull that tight. And now I just have to get through that 8 0. Just like that. And now I'm ready to go in this direction. So, to make these seed beads on the edge stand out, be really pointed and very stiff, you can see that they are pretty much in a perfect row. They're not waving like they are on this one. What I do. I'm going to flip this over eventually. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to pass through these two. This one and this one. I'm going to skip over this bead, pass through these two. Skip over this bead, pass through these two. Skip over this one. When I skip over that center one, that makes it pop out. Pass through these two. Skip over this bead, pass through the, these two. Now when I skip over the eightos, what that is doing, it's making my row straight. If I didn't skip over the 80 and I went through the 80, it would make it wavy. So that's how I get it straight and that's how I make my um little seed bead edging pointed. Okay, so I'm just going to pass through these two seed beads. These two right here. Skip in that middle one, just like that. Pull that tight. Skip in the middle one, passing through two. Pull that tight. Your thread should pop to the bottom. If it doesn't, you'll have to push it down. Okay. And then I can flip this over and I can work on this side and see what I'm doing better. So now I'm going to take my needle, skip over the 8 and pass through two of my 10 -0s. Okay. Skipping over the center one, I'm going to pass through these two. And I can actually do this in one shot. So to save time, I like to take my fingernails and pull these next two out and pass through them with my needle just like that pass through there pull it tight see 
how that's pointing out now. So now I'm over here, skipping over that next seed bead, passing through these two, and then passing through the next two here. Again, skip over the middle, pull this through. Just like that. So I do this all the way around on the outer edge. Okay, passing through two, skipping over the eight, passing through two. Pull it tight. So you can see these here are already straightening up. So I'm just going to continue this. So I am coming out of this 80 seed bead. I just did this section right here, you know, making that point. I went through these two, coming through this 80. Now this is going in this direction and my other tail is going in that direction and that's the correct direction I need to go in. So I have to take and use this needle to go back around through these beads, come out this side and then come out the 8 -o. so I'm going in the same direction as my other thread so I can tie knots. So here I am I'm just going to pass through these beads just like we did before Okay. Through this bugle, that seed bead. And then through this eight. Just the eight. Don't go through any other beads. Okay, now both of my tails are exiting out of the same bead. Now before, when I made this pendant, I had one tail on this side, one tail on this side, and I took the tail and I went through the 80 seed beads and my four millimeters going in this direction, tying half hitch knots. And I went halfway through the pendant because that's as far as the thread would take me. And I took the other one and I did the same thing. But right now, I have both of my tails coming out in the same direction. So, I think what I'm going to do is put both... I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to put both of my tails through the same needle at the same time. And I'm going to try to tie knots with both of them. I think I've tried this before. Okay. I just need them to be at the same point in my thread so it's taunt. Okay. I'm going to pass through my four millimeter. Now I'm going to tie a knot, so I have to pass through this hole here, okay, and then there's this thread right here that's overlapping the 8 I actually need to go under that. I don't want to get stuck on top, so I'm going to come right here. Actually, I can just go in this hole, okay, so then when I pull it through, See that right there? So now I can tie my knot here. So I'm going to go through the loops twice. Be very careful. I'm going to go slow so I don't have any mistakes. Pull that down. And then through the 8 -0. It worked. So I'm going to keep going, tying my half hitch knots, going as far as I can through these larger 4mm and 8 seed beads. 
and then I'll trim my uh, tails off and this is great because I only have to tie knots you know one time because my tails are attached so this is pretty neat I'm just gonna do it one more time through that hole right there I'm gonna come up through this hole and pass my needle through these two loops twice and carefully slide the knot down and then pass through this bead alright so I'm gonna keep going tying my knots and I'll come back and I'm gonna show you how to do the other pendant So now I'm going to show you how to do a continuous version of this donut. So looking at this here, you can see that I'm using smaller bugle beads. I'm actually using 5 millimeter bugle beads, and I'm also using a lot more seed beads. The pattern on this one is more similar to the first one here that I completed, but this one here I am using longer and short ones together. So um, I went all the way around. Okay, I've not connected the two ends yet. You can see there's no connection. And I'm thinking that pulling these two together, that this might be perfect right now. And um, if you want, you can take, if you're doing this, you know, trying to figure out your own, if it's going to work out or not, you could take an 80 C bead and you can kind of tell if, just by holding it on your needle and putting it over, if you have enough wraps around your donut. I think that I do, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up with you guys okay so remember I had my stop bead on the other one I did the same on this one okay and I already um, removed the um, loops from that so it's no longer wrapped around there three times and um, here I am on this side this is my working side I'm just going to pick up a four millimeter bead to close this up and I'm coming out here and I'm just gonna go straight across to this 80 seed bead okay and I'm gonna go down sew down these beads just like this to bring these two sides together okay so I'm gonna sew down through these through my donut hole carefully you don't pass through those there pulling this through You want to pull both tails tight as you go, and I need to make sure I'm coming up the right spot, so it's uh, this row right here. Okay, so I'm just going to pass halfway through. I may have to do a few beads at a time. And I'm just going to come out the same place that my other tail is fixing out of. That 8 right there. Okay, and then I'm going to pull both tails tight. Okay, just like this. Tidy up the edges. So there we go. We have connected it all the way around. So just like on this donut, I'm going to fill in between the gaps with 80 seed beads. So right now I'm exiting out right here. I'm just going to take my needle and pass through the 4 millimeter bead next to where I'm coming out at. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up an 80 and pass through a 4 millimeter. So I pretty much showed how to do this earlier, so I'm just going to do this a couple times to show you what it looks like. And then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so there it is. I filled in three times. I'm going to go all the way around and fill in in between every gap. And when I come back over here where I started, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I went all the way around, and I just have one more bead to put in right there, and I'm going to pass through, I already got my bead, I'm going to pass through 
these two and come out the 8 -0. So on this one, we are working in a circle. So now I'm going to pick up my five seed beads, pass through an 8-0, repeat, all the way around. This one here was different because we had to turn around on the ends here. We couldn't, you know, we're not going all the way around the donut. We're only going a little over halfway around that one there. So very simple, just like we did earlier. We're just going to go in a circle this time instead of stopping halfway. There's my five pass through the next 80. I keep getting caught on my desk. Okay. And again, just like earlier, once you pass through an 8, you have to um shape your C beat into a point, one arrow. Kind of looks like an arrow. So again, five seed beads pass through the next 80 and make an arrow shape. One more time. Five and pass through the next eight. Okay. Just like that, repeat this all the way around and I'll show you what to do next. So as you can see, I have made it all the way around. I picked up my last five beads coming out right here. I'm going to pass through the next 8 -o. And just like I did on my other pendant, I'm going to pass through two seed beads. I'm going to straighten that out first. I'm going to pass through two seed beads, skip a bead, pass through two, skip over the 8 0, pass through two, and I like to do this in one shot, but you can do two at a time if you want. Pull this tight. Make sure that middle bead there stands out. Mine's not wanting to. So I'm just going to lift it with the needle and pull this tight. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to go all the way around doing this just like I did in my other pendant. Pass through two, skip over the center seed bead. Pull that tight, skip over the 8 0, pass through 2, pull that tight, skip over the center, pass through 2. You could do 2 at a time or you can do 4 at a time, like I like to. It's totally up to you. So, see, skipping over the middle one, skipping over the or skipping over the middle one, going through two, skipping the eight, going through two, pulling that through. Always look back and make sure that that bead pops out in the middle. That one right there. Sometimes it doesn't want to do it. And pull it tight. So I'm going to go all the way around. I've already showed you guys how to do this on that one. Doing this, and it's going to make all of our points stand out, and it's going to make them all. Um, nice and pointed so they're not weird looking. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around doing this and I'll show you what to do when I get back. So here you can see I have gone all the way around and my pendant looks beautiful. I'm really happy with it. And now I just have to tie knots and just like we did earlier, I'm coming out here of the um, Tenno seed beads, that's what size they are. I'm going to pass through a bead or two. And then I'm going to start tying half hitch knots just like we did earlier. You'll want to pass the needle down through there, come out through the bottom, and then pass the needle up through here and pass through the loop two times. And then pass through the 8 0 and tie another half hitch knot just like we did earlier. And if you want to see that, you can rewind the video and go to that part where I tied the knots. But I'm going to leave it off here. So that's pretty much it on how you do this. Um, this one here, I'm not totally sure on how I'm going to hang this. I think I want to hang it 
similar to this one I'm gonna have a chain here and a chain there um, this one I might go like from here to here hanging it I don't know I might put a jump ring underneath the four millimeter beads to make it stronger maybe one here one on that side and then have uh, one here that meets in the middle I don't know I'll see how it goes but um, I'm really happy with how this project turned out I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope this was inspirational to you and I would love to see what your donut looks like so please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and don't forget to click the bell button after you subscribe and like me on Facebook and don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest thanks for watching